Hello, beautiful, powerful women. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our conversations and connections live here within the Health and Healing for Women Survivors of Trauma. Lauren Corthy here, founder and admin of this community, fellow survivor, really all about learning how to break survival mode and how we get into and enter into a thriving state. These conversations and connections really are meant to allow us as a community to come together, to bring in women that are a part of this community, to share the wisdom, gifts, insights. And here we are for part three of three with Jamie Hartwig. She talks about mind and body modalities to shed trauma, to shed tension. Week one was all about the overview. Last week, we talked about emotions and emotional intelligence. And this week, we are talking about creating neuro pathways. So if you are here live with us, you'll be joining us on Zoom. We'll have the chance at the end of this to have a conversation. If you're here streaming with us live in the group, drop down in the comments below. Let us know you're there. At any point, if you have questions, you can also drop that in the, the comments and I will help bring that up this is all about, again, making conversation and connection. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Jamie. I'm so excited for this topic and see what you have to share for us. Hello and good morning, everybody from Denver, Colorado. It is a gorgeous sunny day today. And if you want to tell me what your weather is out there, we really would like to hear from you. It's always fun to get little chats in the box and just have a communication going. Um, how do we create neural pathways? Well, all over the world, neuroscientists are beginning to address these questions, which are really always the same questions. How do gooey, stringy brain cells produce a mind? And if you look deeply into the brain, into the inside of the 80 billion brain cells coiled in your head, could you see a thought in there? Could you see a dream or a desire? There's 80 billion cells connected in almost a hundred trillion ways. Brain cells vary tremendously. <laughs> Some stretch their tendrils across vast distances. Others cuddle tightly together with their cell neighbors. Some cell pathways are often used and some are rarely used, and we don't really know which is which. So I want to take you through opening up your neural pathways for a moment. And I wonder, would it be comfortable for you to close your eyes for a moment? And let me just ask you to roll out your shoulders or your neck. If you need to rub some of that fascia in your jaw, or squeeze your earlobes, or get your temples relaxed, especially the eyes. Relax your eyeballs and your eyelids and your eyebrows. And imagine if you were on a remote tropical island, smelling the beach, and how the water is shiny and shimmering from the touch of the sun as it sets. You look toward an ever-growing jungle just a little way beyond you, a jungle of vines, trees. And as the sun sets, it slowly begins to get a little bit darker and the trees are this gorgeous canopy of a jungle that's hiding what un lies underneath it. There's no sound of a human voice. 
only the steady rhythmical lap of the sea. You can smell the flowers and maybe even examine ones that you never knew existed. Can you describe the emotion or the feeling of this wonderful place as you soften your eyes to let your ears Move your attention toward the sound of beautiful animals, all in concert, humming and buzzing and chirping. <laughs> Frogs or, oh, holler monkeys. Yeah, those are the ones, those birds, those birds that have the loudest sounds in the forest. With the monkeys, some of those cries are up to 130 decibels, which is louder than a military jet. Yikes. While you're listening, your brain cells are changing shape. Could you imagine what shape your cells are? As you watch them literally growing branches and firing messages that represent bits of pieces of what you're hearing. And as they fire, their tentacles are multiplying and getting fatter. Their signals are getting stronger and a pattern is forming across tens of thousands of brain cells all pulsing a message that you feel like all the beautiful sounds of the earth are right here in this one moment that you can experience, the only moment you have. Congratulations, you have created a neuronal pattern. And every time you think of this, the cells in your head are linking themselves together more tightly. Together, cuddling up as the animal sounds are rewiring your brain. Da, 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 da. Cells that fire together, wire together. So in the neurosculpting model of meditation, it's known to alter resting brain patterns, suggesting long lasting brain changes. And new studies show us that meditation also is associated with increased cortical thickness. The structural changes were found in the areas of the brain that are so important for sensory, cognitive and emotional processing. Now, I think it's fascinating to me that this suggestion that meditation practice can change anyone's gray matter. So if you have 10 minutes Maybe it's 15, maybe that 15 turns into 20, maybe that 20 turns into 30. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when they put people in like magnetic resonance imaging, they, they showed that regular practice of meditation increases the, um, the thickness in a subset of cortical regions related to sensory auditory, visual, and internal perceptions, like heart rate, like breathing. They also showed that it, 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 the regular practice of meditation may slow age-related thinning of the frontal cortex. Most of the, in this studies, 
that I'm talking about, they were done in the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere is essential for sustaining attention, which is the central practice of insight meditation, neurosculpting. Well, into this century, science believed our brains were hardwired and fixed and that we couldn't generate new brain cells. Well, fortunately for the betterment of mankind, science has changed its tune and it's now widely accepted and empirically proven that our brains are elastic and regenerative. Each one of us has the ability, the capacity to generate new brain cells through lifestyle, nutrition, a process called neurogenesis. The amazing revelations haven't stopped there. Now we also know that we can rewire our neural world of the mind. You know, it's landscape. And it's a lot through imagination, a lot through novelty. It's one of the five steps that, that I use. And you can do it at will. You can do this at your own discretion as one thinks best. Think about that. No longer are we destined to express a genetic disposition toward depression, anxiety, and any other mental illness. No longer are we victims of negative stress, those cycles that perpetuate, you know, by external um, situations. Destiny, like our mind, is malleable. We, we are the dancers of the dance. We're the leader. You know, there always has to be a leader of the dance. We are the dancers and this is our dance. We are the storytellers and this is our life, our life story. So the theory behind all of this is so fascinating and so exciting. I truly, truly love dipping my toes and fingers into this. And I know so little, but how do we do this? How do we take control? And it's, it's been my goal, my mission, my desire to have the practical application of this magicalness inside of us. I mean, if we can't have that application, what good is all of this? And in this neuroscience-based meditation, in this neuroscope, the focus is to help others change their lives and remap shifting reality to one in which our viewpoint becomes that watchtower. And we're just watching, observing from a, a viewpoint that's changing in the moment. And command central is coming from inside of us versus outside of us. So let's realize that during conditions of, or states of stress and fear, you are disabling your ability to learn and map anything new because you disengaged the prefrontal cortex. This medial prefrontal cortex is a critical place in our ability to sculpt our neural pathways. And unfortunately, especially during times that we are experiencing now, we are 
living and functioning in low levels of stress most of the time. So getting our stress under control is super de duper important, right? We cheat ourselves of all the, you know, potential transformations when we ignore our stress. So what do you say? Let's remap, let's re-sculpt. And I'm thinking, why don't I just give you 10, 15, 20 easy things to do to create this inner landscape for your mind? I really think it's great to incorporate like little brain teasers. Um, you know, the problem solving activities, something into your daily life like that. And that's gonna engage your prefrontal cortex right behind your forehead. And in that way, you're gonna increase your dopamine, that neurotransmitter critical in learning and encrypting what you've learned. This is how we grow new neural pathways. Guess what, you guys, you all know this one. <laughs> we got to exercise. We got to move our bodies. We got to shake. A little shameless TRE plug there. Check the uh, website. Yeah. That one you really want to know about. So this stimulates critical growth hormones in the brain that specifically minimize and repair stress damage. Hold on. <laughs> Come here, puppy. I got a puppy. Got a new puppy here. Come here, Sheldon. Come here. Okay, you'll see him in a minute. Come here. Do you want this? Come here. Come here. I got to show everybody the puppy. He's got his diaper on because, you know, he's a puppy. So don't exhaust your brain's energy on like tasks that those you can do without much active thought. If you're gearing up, to have to do higher level tasks like making a big decision or creating a project or organizing an event. You need your prefrontal cortex for this. And it's an energy hog. Reframe or appraise the situations often so that the negative situations become positive or at least palatable. And this too stimulates the prefrontal cortex in a way that encourages new neuronal growth. Put on those rose colored glasses and create the most positive dreamt up idea of a future story. Optimism also is associated with rising levels of dopamine which engages the prefrontal cortex. So we do a lot of this in the five-step method of neurosculpting. We want to use vivid mental imagery, visualization that permeated with emotional links to tell yourself stories of the way you'd like your situation. Connecting with a positive emotion. You could even curl the sides of your mouth just a little bit. It'll help your body remember that everything is going to be okay. It is. You'll see. One moment to the next. So when you imagine things and connect this positive emotion with a visual, it engages the prefrontal cortex and it encrypts that neural 
path more deeply. Um, you could, oh my gosh, I've got something to show you. This is what I take, <clears throat> brain activation, okay? This is, again, shameless plug, it's on my website. Um, premium stuff, amazing. And that's what you wanna do is get brain foods also and supplements that work for you, strong anti, um, oxidants and lots of healthy fats. And, uh, <laughs> you know, meditate and, and practice mindfulness. I have a, a prayer um, practice. This encourages an alpha brainwave state, which is commonly known for a relaxed, slower awareness and a high, you know, that's higher in amp amplitude. So it's between zero and 14 cycles per second, um, which is the foundational state preceding powers and moments of insight. So after completing a task, you just can sit down to rest. Often that's an alpha state. And a person who takes time to reflect or use prayer or meditation is usually in an alpha state. It's power of now. Being here in the present and finding ways also to express gratitude. My two favorite prayers. I am thankful and I am grateful. So reduce or eliminate refined sugars, carbohydrates, and um, use your non-dominant hand to brush your hair. Yeah, that's an easy one, right? You can brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand. How do you turn on the faucet when you need the water? Use your non-dominant hand. I like to jump in bed from the opposite side. I like to sleep with my head at the opposite end of the bed. This will change the pathways. Switch it up, my people. Put your, you know, if you're, if you're putting your socks on, think about putting it on the other foot first. How about when you're in the shower? Do you start washing from top down? Maybe you start washing from bottom up. And again, on that website, fabulous skin brushes. Yeah, it's, it's there. You gotta find it, you gotta search for it, it's crazy. But as you switch these patterns, your brain is gonna take a pause and it's gonna stimulate the prefrontal cortex, creating those new patterns and ways to, pathways to make new um, encryptions or of information. So let's get a new topic of engagement, of interest, of a hobby and begin to learn something. Um, I'm slowly getting into my drumming and some other things that I'm interested in. Um, your prefrontal cortex will be so engaged and so delighted and so happy uh, that you're just going to, it's precisely the factors involved in creating those new neural pathways that we need. And I'm gonna say, I do uh, workshops on this like sleep routines. Follow a sleep routine. Go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. That's it, start there. Absolutely, no kidding. And you know, in the evening, I've 
I'm known for this, is I dim all the lights and I'm choosing something pleasant, a pleasant conversation, a pleasant something to do that, you know, can make bringing the day to an end in a really peaceful way. Um, you got to get that good sleep. Um, it's connected with memory function. Okay, so any kind of theatrical dramas or gossip or avoid it, basically. Um, these reactions fire, fires up the amygdala in the brain and that gets the prefrontal cortex off its game. We don't want to do that now. So move your body into, you know, some kind of dance. Come on, a little rumba, samba. Uh, what you gonna do? You know, think about it. Your body wants to, I mean, you could just start moving your arms. La, 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 la. And just notice what that, what that does. You could just do a, a little shimmy. Just shake it and feel what your body it, frequency is resonating, how it just kind of gets into its own home frequency, sometimes I call it. So make up silly sentences, um, pronounce things like, pretend you're, um, or learn Portuguese or learn some kind of, um, you know, count backwards. Uh, think about your favorite cartoon character. Remember things that will call upon the prefrontal cortex and these executive functions to access working memory. You know, integrate, we talked about this, silly face. Um, and just, you know, think of riddles or things that you can learn to be flexible and shift between different meanings and associations of words. Play, play, play. Get out there and be of service. And, and social and mental activity that required, it, it, it allows the blood to rush up into the prefrontal cortex. Okay, so let's see, should I give a challenge? Okay, so to end this right now, I'm gonna give you a challenge. Learn to juggle. That's gonna fire neurons in a positive way and strengthen the executive functioning significantly. Amen. That's it. I love it. I think we should do this as part of a challenge in the group. We'll take like pictures or video of us trying to juggle for five days, <laughs> once a day. I love it. It's happening. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. There was, I mean, I took like two pages of notes. Oh my uh, gosh. So many good things in there. There's, I mean, there. The coolest thing I think that it comes down to is we are not destined to be one way and that we as a being has, we have so much power within to completely transform. And it, all it takes really is that willingness to try that willingness to like play and mess up and explore and try something new and do something different. And just in that, that's so simple that we all can do that no matter where we are on the journey. Like we can all just show up exactly as we are, as we are with what we have and just try things out. That's, it's so cool. I absolutely love it. You know, you know me, I'm like totally geeking out all like over the neuro stuff and the emotional intelligence. Um, so for the community, we, me and Jamie, we've talked about this and we want to offer a workshop on this. So it would be a two hour event 
where there's an investment and you would receive so much from it, not just on an education side of things, but in an experience, because exact part of that is like getting it into your body to move and explore and play. So it really sinks in for the learning. And then the takeaways, what you're going to be able to do going forward with this information on the health and healing journey will be beyond anything that you can imagine. So if you're curious from what you've learned from Jamie over these past three little converse conversations and connections videos, drop down me in the comments below and we'll reach out to you and we'll get you all the details for the workshop. You're not gonna wanna miss this. It's gonna be so, so, so much fun and so valuable. So. If I'm just gonna give a moment here to check to see if there's any questions coming through on both Zoom, because we have someone with us as well as on Facebook streaming, I'm not seeing any. So what we'll do from here is say, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jamie, for bringing your wisdoms and your gifts to us. Down in the comments below are both her website and her Facebook page. So if you're curious, if this is resonating and aligning, reach out to her directly. She has amazing offers for you to take advantage of and to start your re-sculpting and shedding of trauma and tension. And that's it. That's all for today. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jamie. And I'll see you all in the community.